In the race of life, what's your goal? Wealth, power, position? Or is it to hear well done from Jesus at the finish line? Many Americans treasure their freedom because it means they can do what they like. But freedom is only a value if we use that freedom to choose to be faithful to the cause of Christ. That's the counsel of an apostle in a Roman jail. Stay with us. From the Moody Church in Chicago, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. Today, Erwin Lutzer concludes his answer to the question, Is God on America's side? Turn to Philippians chapter 3 for a look at a race and a prize. Now, let's pick up the theme here of running the race and receiving the right prize. Verse 13, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, oh, that would really simplify your life. Wasn't it D.L. Moody who said, This one thing I do and not these 40 things I dabble in? This one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to lie what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Jesus Christ. Paul says, I want to run. I mean, remember now, he's writing this in a dungeon. Remember, he's writing with no political hope of anyone supporting him. And he says, I want to win the prize. I'm running this race that I might win. That's the fourth mandate. You remember it was Augustine who said that there are really two cities. There's the city of man and there's the city of God. And he says that we are citizens of both and the city of man and the city of God are concurrent in this life. And it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to do what we can to help this city of man in the midst of its brokenness and in the midst of its sin. But it is not necessary for us to have all of the things that we think we need in order to be faithful. One of the reasons, again, I love history, is that I have given a lecture at one time on religious freedom. Did you know that there was no religious freedom in Europe until the Peace of Westphalia in 1648? I mention this because freedom is so important to us. And I support all organizations that work to keep our freedoms. Those organizations where you have attorneys standing up for us, I pray for them, I support them. But did you know that it's not necessary to have freedom in order to be faithful? 2,000 years of church history have proved that. That's why whenever we go to Europe, we spend time finding where some of the martyrs died. Because, you see, they gave their lives. They were faithful even though they didn't have freedom. Even freedom of religion can become an idol. You ask the church in Romania, you ask the church in Russia, in some of the Eastern Bloc countries, and they will tell you, we were faithful even though we didn't have freedom. And I mention that, why? Because they were actually focusing on another prize. There's a world to come beyond this one. I love the story that comes to us from China after the Boxer Rebellion, where the Boxers were trying to uh, take all Christianity and rid China of every Christian influence. And I'm told, I read this story about how they came to a school, a Christian school, And they said to the students, we will put a cross outside the school. If when you walk out, you step on the cross, that means that you despise the cross. We'll allow you to live. But if you respect the cross and walk around it, that's our sign that you are still committed to Christ. We'll shoot you. The first eight students stood on the cross and they lived. But the ninth was a girl who prayed that God would make her faithful. And so what she did is she walked around the cross in honor of it and was shot. And I'm told that all the other students, led by her example, did the same thing. You see, it's possible to be faithful, though you don't have any freedom. It's possible to be faithful and die for Christ. Why? Because the Apostle Paul says, I have my heart and my mind centered on a different prize. 
I want to run this race well. I want to compete in such a way that in the end I'll receive the well done, thou good and faithful servant, whether I have the comforts of life, whether I have the support of life, yes or no. It doesn't make any difference because I will be faithful to what God has called me to do. Folks, what all of our situations and problems remind us of is the fact that this world is not our home. We as Christians believe in another world. And you don't have to be successful in this world in order to be successful in the next. Faithfulness, faithfulness to what God has called us is absolutely critical and necessary. But as the saying goes, it is not necessary for us to win, but it is necessary for us to be faithful in the race. That's the fourth mandate then. We must run the race, the right race, to receive the right prize. And finally, number five, we must have the right focus. We must have the right focus. For this, I I turn to Philippians chapter 3 now. We're in chapter 3, and it says this in verse 20. But our citizenship, Paul is writing this from the dungeon. Our citizenship, the Greek word is polytuma, from which we get the word politics. Our politics, if you please, is in heaven. And from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Paul says our focus is heaven, our focus is on Christ, Our focus and belief is that he is returning again and he is going to transform things. And meanwhile, until we get there, our focus is going to be on him and faithfulness is going to be our watchword. And I urge that today in the midst of our political need that is so great. And I'd like to say that part of that faithfulness is prayer. We need to call on God on behalf of our nation. I love that passage in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 that you can read on your own. King Jehoshaphat has an army coming toward him that is so much bigger than his own army. And you remember, he gathers the people and they fast and they pray and he says, let us look to God.